example. One. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Business Over Drinks. My name is Teng and I'm calling in from Singapore. And my name is David. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. I'm calling in from Australia. And, and today we are going calling oh. in. Oh, am I supposed to introduce myself? Well, yeah, well, 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 well done. done, well done, David. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to both of you, one for not jump, not for, one for not introducing fast enough, and one for jumping the gun. <laughs> this is why pre-calls are useless, man. That's all I've been saying. Like, pre-call, pre-calls don't yeah, work. Yeah, we we spent like half an hour planning this. Yeah. But, oh, well. <laughs> oh, if as if, man, we spent like ten minutes at most. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so yeah, maybe I'll just do a really quick introduction about uh, David Wong, uh, who is the co-founder of Dimples, which is a golfing startup based in Southeast Asia and uh, Australia as well. So that's really cool. And um, so David's Malaysian. I met him when he was in Singapore and he's working for a data visualization company. I'll just say that. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm assuming that's right. And then, yeah, so then he told me, like, when I first met him, I think the second time or first time I met him, he's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my own business. I'm like, cool, man. I, I don't care. Where's the alcohol? Right? <laughs> that, was gen- that was genuinely how it was. And then, yeah, then later on, he started his own business and that's how Dimples came about. So like, that's actually, that's the first time I ever heard about Dimples. Uh, when I first met him in, a, in, an off, in his old office, uh, I think it was before a party, right? Or something? Was it a Probably, party or something? Yeah. Yeah. I can't Did remember. You? They had so many parties there. I can't yeah. remember what, what they were. Yeah, I and mean, they wasted a lot of their invested money, man. No, jo- I'm joking. They didn't. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, David, maybe uh, David Wong, maybe you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, especially the parts that didn't touch about your time in Shanghai, um, then also like you know the journey to start Dimples. Uh, thanks, thanks, guys. Uh, I'll I'll do a very very quick intro as fast as I can. Uh, I'm born and raised in Malaysia, uh, and then I went to uh, the school. I went to school in the U.S. I got a finance degree. Uh, didn't use it at all until actually recently. Um, but in the last twenty years, um, I've been doing a lot of. I've been in a lot of sales and management roles. Um, so I've done. Uh, let me, I'll, I'll share a few interesting things that I've done across. Uh, I've sold books door to door when I was in college. Um, I've sold uh, food from a food manufacturer. I've sold vacuum cleaners to homes. Uh, and, then, and then I started on my digital marketing journey, uh, which, I work, which I work with um, a company called Nafneng, uh, the ASX listed company. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also started their uh, China and Hong Kong offices, um, which I, when I've never been to China before. So we were based in Beijing. And then after that, I came back. And then I love China so much, I went to Shanghai and spent two years there with another bigger group called WPP. And then um, I loved it a lot, but another company, which is what you said, Nugget, uh, asked me to go to Singapore, which I did, and I did a regional role, uh, which is a data analytics company. So the last 10 years has been a lot of digital marketing, technology analytics kind of stuff. And then um, I've been playing golf for the last 10 years. And um, the problem I've always had is when I want to play, my friends can't play. And when they want to play, I can't play. And I thought there had to be a solution out there to kind of solve this problem, but I couldn't find it. Uh, so it was terrible, um, but I didn't want to give up. So we created Dimples to solve this problem. So today I can play whenever and wherever I want to. Whoa, nice. Okay, <laughs> excellent. I'm just, I'm just really happy you started a company so you can play golf, man. That's really cool. It's really inspiring. <laughs> just, we were talking about how, how you, your work structure was, and it sounds like you just keep drinking and, and playing golf. So it's not just something that, um, it's, it's, it's not something that just uh, punching, you know, safe. It's something that even until today, like a lot of the golfers that I've met uh, or people that I've met around me, so it's not just you, Tom, right? It's yeah. everybody else. They think the same thing as well. They say, oh, uh, you want to come play golf with us? I'm like, no, I have to work. I'm like, but your work is golf. I'm like, no, my work is not golf. My work is helping you play more golf. <laughs> and then he says i'm just kidding let's go play around <laughs> <laughs> um so yes i mean like the whole reason why we did this right is because like i i love to play um but you know i couldn't get a game in whenever i wanted to play so with all that mm. say money that i was making when i was you know working i i couldn't put it to good use because like yeah. you know you work to do something you love but if you can't do the things you love then why work for it right um so that's why we built this so i can you know go play golf whenever i want to I've got a question about that, but before we start, should we talk about what we're drinking tonight? 
Oh yeah, man, Dave's that. Uh, so tonight I've got a bottle of 99 in the shade 2017 Merlot. Goes down really, really well. I'm really enjoying it. I'm in my second glass. Oh, nice. I've got a San Miguel Light because that's all I could find. And I didn't want to open up a bottle of gin. So cool. Uh, David Wong, tell us what you're drinking. (laughs) I have a full (laughs) bottle of water. (laughs) Whoa. Damn, man. (laughs) Listen, we don't don't condone like drinking if you don't want to, but weak. (laughs) That's all I want to say. So I told you I was going to call you weak on the podcast and that's all I want to do. Okay, cool. It's yeah, fine. sorry, sorry, Dave. Uh, you want to ask David a it's question, fine. man? It's fine. Yeah, so <clears throat> I've met a lot of people who, who who want to start an app. They've got this wonderful app idea, but then they don't realize the immensity of it. Like, how, just to start off with, how, how do you even start creating an app? Or yeah, how, how where do you start, and 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 what's involved? The, so. Since we've started the both, um, a lot of people have asked us the same thing. Like, hey, hey, I have an app idea. I have an app idea. I want to build it. I want to build it, right? Mm. So the first thing I always throw back to people is why? You know, why are you doing this? And they're like, oh, I want to do this. I want to match this with this. And then there's nothing out there that does this. I'm like, okay, well, can you do this with a website? They're like, yeah, but you know, with the app, it's cooler. I'm like, well, can you even do it with like... Um, uh, an Excel sheet. They're like, yeah, but it's not cool. So it is true. It does take a lot of effort. Um, and it takes a, a one extra hurdle because instead of people just going onto a website, people have to download that app and that's an extra hurdle. So it does take a lot of effort, a lot more resources, not just to build, but to maintain as well. So you really want to be sure that you're building it for something that you can get full value out of. Otherwise then it's not worth it. Well, that's fair enough, man. But like, um, so when you decide it's worth it, right? So obviously you weighed the pros and cons, you, you planned it out, right? But like, how do, how do you take that first step? You know, you're really like really getting started, right? Um, man, there's no good answer for that. Um, so if you have a lot of money, no issues, go straight to it, right? And just, you know, pump like, you know, 100, 200 grand, 300 grand on it. But uh, that's what David more- and I are going to do just for fun. Just no reason. Yeah. Just put 300 grand into things. <laughs> Put it into a bin and just set it on fire. Yeah, I right. see, I just use it as like a doorstop, man. <laughs> oh, well, how most people start, and probably that's how we started as well. So, so just being very, very lucky. So we got uh, a tech uh, co co founder that was willing to build this, you know, at minimal, minimal, minimal cost. You know, basically no cost, no time cost for themselves, but maybe some outsource cost. So it was a lot cheaper in that way. But of course, why? The reason, the, the question is, why would they want to do it? Um, then it's the, the, the honest is on me to kind of sell the idea to them. Like, hey, this would be able to, you know, make this, 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 this. This is my marketing plan that can do this, 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 this. I'm going to get all these users in, but I can't do this until you rehab this. And if they, if they think it makes sense, then they build it. If they don't think it makes sense, then nobody's going to build it. You know, why would they build something for somebody when you can promise the world if they don't believe in it? So that was that first big sale that I guess I had to do. Uh, otherwise, mm-hmm. I'll be selling out to 300K. We build Got something it. from an eight. Yeah. Got it. And this was, this was Isaac, right? This was Isaac, yes. Yeah, that's cool. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I, I think I met him when I was in Kale. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's really interesting, man. But like, I, I think a lot of us, and we look at it, right? Technical co-founders are really important. But it, I mean, finding that great tech guy, right? is really hard. Usually, it's really hard for people. Um, so, I mean, the challenges. I always, I always feel like, you know, the tech side um, really can be solved by money, right? If, if it comes to that. Um, but I always um, focus a lot and I tell people that ask me that, what's your marketing strategy? That is the more important part, right? Got it. Because with money, you can build whatever you want to build. But with money, it doesn't really mean that you're going to get the users that you want to get. So... That marketing strategy is just so much more important. And I always, they, they always say, oh, but I'm stuck with the tech part. I'm like, can you do it without tech first? And then do the marketing stuff first and get users first and get revenue first before you start building, you know, an app. Why use an app? Why can't you use the Excel sheet? Excel is free. Google Sheets is free, right? Use that first and then upgrade as you go along, right? Got it. No, I agree. I agree 100% with that, man. I think the interesting thing is, um, when you say that it can be solved with money, man, that's true. A lot of things can be solved with money. 
And I think that's going to be the title of this podcast, man. David Wong says so any, any, can solve, <laughs> all the problems in the world can be solved with money, guys. <laughs> more money. Here's my email address. If you want money, my name is David Wong. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry, David. Yeah, please carry on. So, uh, marketing. So, how any strategies to start off? So, you, you've got this app idea. Um, you, may, you may be lucky enough to have a tech guy, but you said marketing first. Can, can you kind of extrapolate from that? So it really depends on what you're building, right? There's so many different types of tech products these days. I mean, you have, I mean, just to generalize, you have the B2B, you have the B2C, mm -hmm. right? Um, the B2B stuff, now, it's very, very different, right? The, this is how I generalize it. The B2B stuff, you don't need great products. You need great salespeople. So you go out and sell it, and then you deliver later. B2C stuff, you need really good product because you only have one chance to make the customers excited. If they are not excited, they just won't use it anymore. So B2C, you need really, really good product. Now, how do you get customers, right? This one, you need a good sales team. Just go out and sell, which is what I did previously in Nugget, right? I just went out there and sold, right? But for this, it's not having a good salesperson because you're not selling to every single golfer or user, right? I mean, Facebook doesn't go to you and say, hey, you know, hey, you know, can I set up an appointment so I can show you how to download Facebook? Well, right? Mark Zuckerberg did that with us, man. You just called us. Man. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, can hey, you set up hey, a business of a drinks page? I'm like, all right. Okay. All right, Mark. Okay, Finally. Well, it's easy. <laughs> right? Shut up. Show that it already. Um, so, so like, I mean, think of all, think of all the really good. So, so a, a good, easy exercise is just look at your phone today and look at the apps that are on it. And those apps are mostly B2C apps, right? Then think, you know, what is the thing that made you want to download that app? And that's where you can see, you know, the type no. of marketing. Man, you know, I was that. just really drunk when I downloaded half my apps, man. Just really janky ass apps. <laughs> like just really <laughs> stupid apps. Just like seven solitaire apps on my phone. There's no reason. <laughs> seven calculators. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh. Would you, like pay, would you like to pay $12 for a calculator that can uh, calculate pi up to 14 digits? Okay. Shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely doing it. Yeah, B2C marketing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so maybe, man, what would be really interesting, right? Just to, just to tap onto that, because I think that's really interesting to look at it from that perspective. But um, like just off what David said, right? Like what did you, like David Bobby said, right? So like what? Like for dimples, right? What did you do? Like maybe just give us the highlights. Obviously, you don't need to go through your marketing strategy in detail. Let's not let's not let's not sell competitive secrets out there. But like, give us the highlights. There are no secrets, man. I mean, like for something like this, it's a marketplace. The IP. Give me a pin number. Give me a pin number. <laughs> <laughs> you said there are no secrets. The you said there are no secrets, man. <laughs> Your mother's oh. made a name. <laughs> oh, uh. <laughs> Or is it like your your first pet's name? Yeah, first yeah. pet's yeah. name. Your first pet's name. Your childhood best friend. Yeah. Um, what was the question again? It's so just... uh, give us the highlights of what you did for Dimples in so uh, when you initially had to market it. How did tell us how you got your first thousand users? Right. I mean that that's something really simple, right? Yeah. So and, and this is going to be very different for every different type of product, right? But for Dimples, um, because we started Dimples uh, when I was based in Singapore, but we did Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the easiest way to get it out, I mean, today for anything is Facebook yep. ads. You just dump a bunch of Facebook ads out, right? Now, was that the best strategy to do? Um, uh, you know, I think what I would have done and what we did do for the Australian market, which we did, um, was. Ultimately, you need to understand your product. And Dimples was actually a two-sided marketplace, even though it was just golfers within golfers, right? It wasn't yeah. golfers and golf courses yet. It was just golfers. And within golfers, you needed, like as a user, you go into the app and you see, oh, there's a bunch of games and then you join. But if you go into the app and you see like, oh, there's no games at all, then you'll be like, it's a ghost town, right? So what do you have to do? You have to create or artificially create all those games. So the first thing you have to do was to get all these golfers to post all these games. So kind of like how Grab or Uber seeds drivers out there when they first started, we had to seed, um, seed golfers to post games. So they were organizing games on the platform. And when people, when we ran a bunch of Facebook ads to, to get people in, they would go in there and see like, oh, that's a bunch of games. This is happening in that sense. So were they like paid golfers? Yeah. So initially we had to pay a bunch of people, you know, to kind of do that. Um, it's, it's the way that it can be solved by money. So, yeah, so, so we, we, we only did that actually for, um, for Australia, 
Now for Malaysia, it was really, really, we, we didn't know how to do that yet. So we ran Facebook ads. Um, I was, you know, hustling by going to where golfers congregate, which is golf courses or <laughs> uh, driving ranges. Work, and, work. <laughs> and, just, and just bugging people and bugging people there. So I'll be going around to all the whole restaurant and just like going to them like, hey, hey, hey. Hey, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have oh, no, this? actually, no. So I can actually attest to that. When uh, David was in Singapore for a golf, um, well, for like a, for an event, right? It was an exhibition or something. We had coffee in the mall. I think it was Marina uh, Square Mall or something. And he literally yeah. sold dimples, the three people who, uh, who uh, were <laughs> sitting in a coffee store next to us. He's like, give me a minute. I'll be back. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, hey, I saw that, I saw that you, 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 you play golf. I'm like, what the? <laughs> he literally just went and just like three random guys sitting like three old random dudes sitting at a table and, just, and they are like okay cool roll down the dimples I'm like what what happened <laughs> it was cool it was I've really good actually it was really interesting to see I've converted people at the uh, the baggage counter when you're waiting wow. for your golf bags because that's wow. when the oversize uh, comes out mm. and you know they're all waiting for golf bags so oh, I'm like nice. oh oh if you check this out, right? So this is everything that you need to do. I feel that I had to do in the early days, right? When, you know, every second counts, you just have to like, you know, hustle everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, once we've gotten past, it's a different, it's a different, um, it's a different strategy for every like first thousand users. Yeah, first yeah. yeah of course users, you, you change, right? right? As you grow, yeah. You change, right? So when we had zero, right? It was just like, man, everybody, I'm getting everybody, right? But today, you know, we've come to a stage where people know about dimples already because like the, the, it's such a small niche. So people know each other and they mm. tell people, you know, if it's a good thing. If it's a bad thing, they'll be like, hey, have you heard of dimples? It sucks. <laughs> yep. But thankfully, you know, it, it wasn't. And then people, you know, it just normals that way. I, I think it's safe to say, right, that dimples is probably like the biggest, uh, I mean, easily the biggest golfing, like golf startup, golf product like this, right, service in, in Asia, I would say, right? Um, there are some big ones in probably Japan and Korea, which are really, really large golf markets. Yeah, but um, the, I mean, but those don't count, man. Those don't count. <laughs> those don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I had so many really <laughs> terrible reasons to share, but I was just like, I was like, those don't. Oh no, just keep quiet. Just don't say a word. No, no, no. I'm, I'm okay. So, like, if we talk region, right? So, say we talk Southeast Asia, we talk like maybe then the because just in terms of what you're doing. Like yeah. I've never seen it before in this region. I would have heard about it at least. Like yeah. I haven't seen a single thing like it. Yeah. That's really that's really interesting, man. Um, uh, so I mean, so I, one thing, uh, maybe just a quick recap, right? One thing they said was really interesting was the fact that your first thousand, and then you, it was was like where you didn't know anything. You were just trying everything, and it was tough. But then your second thousand, your third, and like your, your multiples and that, right? Just be, it became different, became easier, maybe became you became more selective with what you did. I think that's really interesting, man, because it goes a little bit counter, counter uh, and David, uh, uh, Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, remember we said you, you should never stop hustling, but like, mm. I don't think David, I, David Wong, I don't think you you stopped hustling, but I just think you became smart about how you hustle, right? Would that be a safe thing to say? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you only have 24 hours in a day, right? So if you know what doesn't work anymore, then just don't do that and just do the things that work and, um, with the same amount of time, you want to get a lot more users at the same time. So the initial days were just a lot of testing, you know, so finding out, getting feedback from people, you know, the app is breaking here and there, right? But at the mm -hmm. same time, you're trying to, you know, get users on, but then users don't stay on because they don't retain because there's not enough, there's not enough uh, uh, volume in the app, right? And yeah. people drop off, right? But, you know, you just have to keep pushing in all different angles and then, yeah. Okay, nice, man. Yeah. Is, is there anything you do differently? Like if you could start again, was there anything you would do differently with dimples? Um, so in when we, we will be starting again whenever we launch in every new city. Um, mm. So like if we launch in Brisbane, that would be a yep. completely new market, right? So that would be zero to, you know, a thousand again. Um, so would I do that differently? Yes, I would do it differently from how I started Malaysia, which was just like, you know, ramp, ramp, you know, just Facebook ads and not knowing what to do, we would line up like maybe 20, 30 golfers and pay them to post games already um, so that there will be sufficient demand there. And then all those traffic that you drive in from Facebook ads and SEO and SEM and everything, those will be worthwhile. Yeah. 
it's like no point driving like a bunch of riders into Grab when there's no drivers waiting to drive you. Yeah, yeah. for those outside of Southeast Asia that don't know Grab, Grab's basically the Uber of Southeast Asia. So yeah, just FYI. Um, that was a that was a factual update. Yeah, welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, um, so like, um, so that's interesting, right? Because you keep on talking about how like, you know, you, everything's like a new start for you. And I think maybe one thing that I'd like to know a little bit more, right? Was um, when we talk about the challenges of growing your business and then your expansion, like, you know, the fact that you expanded, how many marks now? Six? Uh, six, yeah. Six. Six markets, right? And then like, you know, I mean the I'll be honest with you, man, COVID nineteen kind of just like it hit every it hurt everybody, right? And you it hurt you as well because obviously golf kind of stops, right? Mm -hmm. Uh like how do you maintain that maintain that momentum or at least trying to regain that momentum now things are gone, right? It's it's gone. It was gone. Let's be honest, it was gone. How do you how do you regain it now? Uh you mean how do we restart it? Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um when when COVID hit we we didn't know like how long this was going to last for so we were kind of like panicking like okay is this the end of it you know because we we have a certain amount of runway and it was actually quite disheartening because like before covid we just started monetizing and for the first three years we did not monetize at all so we just started monetizing and we saw like revenues are growing like 50 percent month on month right um, which is low base you know but it was growing and then covid hit and then we're like oh shit, what do we do? Because um, people can't play golf anymore. That means no mm -hmm. revenue, no rounds, no nothing. Um, so we kind of took that opportunity to say, but a lot of people are doing a lot of golf videos um, uh, that are playing at home, right? Playing in the backyards and all. So we're thinking maybe we need to sell stuff um, to these people, like chipping stuff or putting stuff at home, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because people are buying those things. And we saw like the Google search trends, those are just like... <laughs> going up like crazy oh nice um, yeah. so we took the opportunity to create uh, our dimples golf store which is still up uh, until today uh, so that wasn't the plan until like phase four right which is like mm -hmm. you know two three years down the road but we kind of like you know accelerated it up mm -hmm. but in a very haphazard way we just get a store up so you know we use open cart we just got a store up put some nice colors on it and then we called a few suppliers and they say okay i'm just gonna list your stuff no you so it's kind of like a drop shipping but using our own our own um, storefront um, so yeah, we did that, but we didn't do too much of it um, because within like a month and a half or two months, then the golf courses opened back up. And then that's where um, we got golf courses back on board, you know, all the, uh, all the transactions back on board. And we just, the first month of business, we just um, almost doubled what we last did in the last four months. Wow. Um, and, and this month we were looking at like, you know, a, a good growth again. Oh, he's, he's making so much money, man. He's really good. So, so uh, thanks, thanks for the payment that you're going to send us, man. Yeah, and for <laughs> your mother's maiden name. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our time is almost up, but um, yeah, so it's in Australia now. How can, um, how can we go about um, organizing golf games? So we only uh, made it available in Melbourne, just Melbourne okay. for now. Um, yep. And we're looking for more partners to be able to launch in different Australian cities. Um, as what we spoke about just now, right? Launching something like this in Australia or in any city in Australia would require sufficient resources, marketing budgets. So we wouldn't want to do it um, without it. Uh, otherwise, then it would just be something that would be done halfway and it would never push through. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so, so maybe we can put your contact details in the show notes for anyone who could be interested. Yeah. Whoever that wants to own dimples in Australia. Let's work together. Cool. Yeah, it's a good dude, app. Well, yeah. I managed to download it. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting app. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried it. Obviously, it's not, I can't do the services yet because I'm based in Brisbane. But yeah, it looks all right. You can check it out. Um, you can see all, uh, all the Melbourne courses are available there. So there's like about five, 400 golf courses around the Victoria area. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch in Queensland as well. Oh, nice, man. It, Dave, you should become, you should just learn golf, man. You can be one of the people, uh, David Wong I'm pays. horrible at golf. I, I want to be better at golf. Um, man, 
It's probably a dumb suck. question to ask. How do you play golf? This is a really good question. Just ask, just ask, just ask, man. Just, just <laughs> ask, professional. Ask, ask everyone, like, how do you play? Just tell me how you play golf. <laughs> then the podcast goes for about three hours. <laughs> well, he, just runs you through, he just runs you through the process of golf. <laughs> so, this is the four oh, iron. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no. So then that's interesting, man. So Dave, um, David Wong, do you have any last, like last words for us? Anything that you want to share? Anything that you want to plug apart from the Melbourne course, which you are Melbourne um, launch because you've already done that. Um, so if you're wanting to start golf, um, you know, just get to the local driving range and hit a few balls. Uh, if you haven't tried out the app, try out the app. Um, if you want to build your own app, don't. Start with an Excel sheet and then go from there. <laughs> nice. Oh, just FYI, so, uh, you still have driving ranges on your on dimples, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually, so you can even use dimples to learn how to uh, play golf. Uh, you use dimples to find other people to go to the driving range with. Yeah, that's and good. then that's learn really how useful. to play golf, man. You just learn how, just like random people as well, just mostly girls. Or find, <laughs> just, find don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Don't do no. it. I can. I can see. I can see. I can. I can see Dave looking really just like really weird in the thing. It's like, oh, don't. <laughs> Which Dave? You man, <laughs> <laughs> just look really dodge. Just look really dodge for a second. No man. Uh, <laughs> um. So it's just, so. if you're looking for, a, if you need a golfing buddy, so which countries um is is dimples available? Like who can use it at the moment? Uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, Brunei, and just Melbourne for Australia. Awesome. But hopefully by the time this is out, you know, it's starting to go a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Nice, man. No, we're looking forward to it, man. So uh, we'll have a, in our show notes, we'll have a link to how to download um, David's uh, app dimples. And then we'll also have a little bit more information about David and, and things you can read up about him. It's just really so embarrassing that's, things. For those who want to check it out now, uh, it's, it's D double E, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, D W E M P L E S. So you just look it up on your app store, then you should yeah. be able to download it. It's if really you want to find um, embarrassing things, um, do David Wong embarrassing photos turn. Yeah. <laughs> then, that's this all on, that was a website that I just created. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> just fine. Just really bad photos of David Wong. Yeah, it's cool. All right, man. Hey, thanks. Thanks for your time, David. That was really interesting, man. I enjoyed, oh, I enjoyed our conversation, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I think so, it was really, really useful. Yeah, it, it was. Really it was. I think it's really good having people who, who kind of live through it, right? To really uh, yeah. share versus, uh, you know, people who just talk about it like self help gurus type thing. So this is more like, you know, I've done it, I've gone through that pain, and here's what it is, right? Hmm. All right, man. I mean, you're, still, you're still weak for drinking water, but all right, cool. <laughs> all right. All right. I'll, buy, I'll buy half a beer next time. <laughs> excellent. Oh, thank excellent. You so much. <laughs> all right, man. Hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. See you guys. All right. yeah. uh, Dave, do you want to do an outro before we go? Are you talking to me? Yeah, talking to you, man. Is this I still can recording? Do the outro. <laughs> <laughs> We're still recording. Did you want to do an outro? Like, uh, so yeah, if, if anybody, if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to see the show notes, uh, go to uh, uh, businessoverdrinks.com. Uh, if you want to, if you want to find out more, have any feedback, any questions you want to ask us, or even ask David Wong uh, from Dimples, just drop us an email at hello at um, businessoverdrinks.com. And yeah, so then in our show notes, you'll also find out what uh, giveaway we're having this uh, for this episode. Also, uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Business Over Drinks, and LinkedIn, Business Over Drinks. That's it. All right, thanks, man. Thanks, thanks for being really on the ball with the outro. Yeah, sorry, sorry, man. All, All right, right man. I get okay. confused because there's two Davids in the room. I don't feel as special. <laughs> Just say, uh, Bobis and Wong. Yeah, there so, you go. It sounds like a really oh, racist yeah. cop show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Bobis is a what? A, a Filipino name. Uh, I was born in the Philippines, yeah, but the, the surname has, I think, Spanish mm. heritage. All right, guys, I'm going to end mm. the recording now because that's really interesting, but I have a feeling we're going <laughs> to we're gonna, we're gonna tread some really, really he- sensitive topics in a second. Um, I didn't, yeah, you can, you can just like turn off the recording, right? Because like, um, I didn't want to like go, like jump in too many times. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So.